When working with probability density functions, a situation we've found ourselves in a lot is integrating and then substituting in some values where the values are quite messy. So we just hand over to a calculator to do all that arithmetic and number crunching for us. And that's something we're pretty used to. But one of the things that comes up is that often a calculator is not sufficient technology to be able to come up with the answers that we're looking for. And this is an example of that. So I wanna walk you through what to do when you encounter a question that requires this. This question starts off relatively simply. You've got a continuous random variable and the probability density function is given here. So it's defined in this way over this particular domain. And then the question is, uh, find the median. This is the thing that we're being asked to search for. So I'm just gonna uh, highlight that because it's important. Now, if we're trying to find the median, uh, number one, we're gonna have to work out what's the technique that I use for that. And then number two, I'm gonna have to use the appropriate technology um, to actually locate the answer. So how do I find the median? Well, since we know that if you integrate a probability density function over its entire domain, that should give you one. Um, therefore, if we're saying from you know, the beginning of the domain up to the median, the median we recall is the middle score. So if you go from uh, the bottom of your interval to the middle, then, and you integrate the function, you should get half of the people. And the same is true if you started from the median and then went to the end of your data set. So if I went from, uh, you know, instead of going from A to Q2, if I went from Q2 to B, where B was my endpoint, um, I should still get a half like I have here. And it just is up to me whether I want to use um, the start point or the end point. Uh, when I have a look at this, it looks to me that the start point being zero is going to be more useful because when I evaluate it in my integral, my definite integral, um, it'll often end up being zero. So why not use that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this um, idea over here and I'm going to use it in this particular situation. So what are my A and my Q2? Well, A is zero, Q2 is my unknown, so it's just going to stay there. And then here comes my f of x. It's 3 over 13, x squared plus 4. I'm integrating with respect to x. And um, as we were saying before, this should give us a half, all right? So here's my trajectory. I know where I'm headed now and sort of my calculus brain kicks in. Uh, let's start doing the working here. So uh, the three over 13, um, I'm going to factorize that out the front so that I don't need to worry about it in the process of integration. Uh, I'm going to write that dx is equal to a half. Uh, I noticed that I've got this 3 over 13 over here and then this half over here. So these are both constant coefficients. So I might as well combine them while I'm at it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 13 on 3. If I multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this, it'll, it'll cancel this term. The multiplied by 13 on 3 will just end up on the right hand side. And I might as well, while I'm at it, actually perform the integration. So x squared, it integrates up into x cubed on 3. Um, 4 integrates up into 4x. And then I have my lower and my upper boundaries. Okay, so integration done. Let's do our evaluation at each of the upper and lower bounds. So here comes the upper bound. So it's uh, q2, my median. It's cubed, and that's divided by 3. And then I've got four lots of q2. And then I subtract my lower boundary. And because the lower boundary is zero, and I notice that it's gonna get substituted into both of these x terms here, I know I end up with zero. So I'm just gonna write take away zero along the end there. Um, we'll tidy up the right hand side, it's 13 on six. And when I have a look at this whole line here, um, there's fractions which I sort of instinctively wanna get rid of. So I'm looking at this six and this three over here. If I multiply through by six, um, that should get rid of all my fractions. So let's do that. I'm gonna end up with two lots of q2 cubed. I'm multiplying by six, so that leaves me with 24 lots of q2. And then here, I multiply by six, so it gets uh, rid of that denominator there. All right, so this leaves me with this equation. And what I'm trying to do is uh, make q2 the median. I'm trying to make that the subject, except I've kind of run into a snag because at this point, I've been handed or I've created and generated a an equation I can't solve, at least not by hand. Um, it's not a quadratic. You can see that the power here is three, so I can't use the quadratic formula on it. Um, and I kind of think, well, I, there's no easy way, like I can't factorize out Q2 or something like that. So there's not gonna be um, a simple way to find a, a factor for this that will give me the solution. Um, if you 
If you were an extension one student from the past, you could use something called Newton's method, which helps us approximate solutions to equations like this. Um, but I'd rather not do that because not within the course that I'm teaching and you're studying right now. So how can we work with this? And the answer is with technology. Um, essentially what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to solve the equation 2x cubed plus 24x minus 13 equals zero. I've just written it with x's instead of that awkward Q2 median notation. And technology can help me with this, right? Um, this is a graph and I want to find where does that graph equal zero. In other words, where is the x-intercept, right? So you've got a whole bunch of different pieces of software that can help you do this. Um, for me, my go-to is uh, Desmos, so I can graph this equation here and find where it equals zero, find its x-intercept, right? So let's have a go. Uh, I'm going to write in 24, oh sorry, that's, that's the other coefficient. I'm going to write 2x cubed. Now I'm going to write 24x, and then I'm going to say minus 13. Okay, so this looks a bit weird. Uh, the scale is not very helpful to us. So if I just sort of pinch in, I'm going to get, there you go. That's the familiar sort of cubic looking shape that I would expect from something like 2x cubed, etc. And what I'm looking for, if you recall, is when does this graph equal zero? So I'm going to be zooming in to find where is that intercept. And you can see one of the things that Desmos does is it actually will highlight for you, if you click on the graph, um, you can see that little gray circle there is the intercept. And if I click on it, I get a coordinate. So it's 0 0.5293, and then the other part is the zero that I'm equal to. So what I can say here is that this is the, uh, this is the value for the median that I'm searching for. Um, Q2 is approximately 0 0.5293. So if I have a think about it, uh, this does make sense because um, 0 0.5293, it is around the center of my, uh, where my probability density function is defined between naught and one. Um, in fact, it's so close to the middle, I'm kind of suspicious. So what I'm gonna do quickly here is hide my, uh, my equation, the cubic equation I was looking at here. If I graph my probability density function, three on 13, and I'm gonna put in x squared, plus four, and I'm only interested in a certain domain, namely from naught to one. So you can see here, now when I zoom in, um, the reason why we got something so close to like literally the middle between zero and one, 0 0.5, the reason why we got so close is because when you have a look at this probability density function, um, it's not a uniform probability distribution, but it's very close to one. Like you can see the interval that I'm interested in, it's it's very close to flat. So that's why you can see it's just a little bit to the right because um, if you think about the way this data is skewed, um, probability towards the right, towards the value of one is higher. So that means there must be more scores on that side. So in summary, when you get a question like this, um, particularly when you get to the point where integration, which is up here, integration is finished, um, you substituted everything in, and I'll, I'll just make this a bit bigger again so you can see it more clearly. You substituted everything in, and then you get this equation, and when you tidy it up, you get something which it doesn't look like you can factorize, and you think, I, I don't have techniques to solve this. Um, that is where you're gonna need to appeal to technology. Um, and if you use it appropriately, if you can translate your problem into one that the technology can read, then as you can see, um, it's going to be able to give you an answer. There we go, there's the domain that was interesting. Uh, it will give you an answer that you can interpret and recognize.